Hello, and thank you for visiting the Emergency License Requirements component of the Massachusetts Educator Licensure Series, also referred to as MELS. This presentation is for individuals who hold an emergency teacher license who want to obtain an emergency extension teacher license. Throughout this presentation, there will be references to finding additional information, such as guides, forms, and other websites. You can find these resources through links located within the overview directly beneath this video. In this presentation, we will cover emergency license extension, how do you apply, and the steps to satisfy the requirements, English as a second language emergency extension, special education emergency extension, waivers, licensure office applicant support. First, we will cover the extension of emergency licenses. Emergency licenses began being issued on June 8, 2020, and per the language in the statute, the Office of Educator Licensure stopped issuing them on December 12, 2021. An emergency license is designed to assist candidates who were impacted by the COVID-19 state of emergency and the inability to satisfy certain aspects of the licensure requirements, such as a passing score on the Massachusetts Test for Educator Licensure, also referred to as the MTEL. In response to feedback from districts and due to continued challenges as a result of the ongoing impact of the coronavirus, Commissioner Riley has extended the validity period of some emergency licenses through June 30, 2023. Existing emergency licenses for special education and ESL are valid until June 30, 2022. All other fields of emergency license are valid until June 30, 2023. All emergency licenses were automatically extended and will be valid until June 30, 2023, except for the following licenses. Teacher of students with moderate disabilities, teacher of students with severe disabilities, teacher of the deaf and hard of hearing, ASL slash TC, teacher of the deaf and hard of hearing, oral and aural, teacher of the visually impaired, English as a second language. Emergency licenses that have been granted in the above six license areas are valid through June 30, 2022, and are not subject to the automatic one-year extension. However, individuals with an emergency license in these fields are eligible to apply for a no-cost extension of their emergency license via their ELAR account. An extension to June 30, 2023 will be given to those that demonstrate appropriate subject matter knowledge in the field. Now we will look at the extension requirements for the English as a Second Language license. To qualify for the extension, applicants must be able to demonstrate appropriate subject matter knowledge in the field. For the ESL license, this means passing the subject matter MTEL. For subject matter knowledge alternative assessments, there are two types of alternatives. The first is the Educator Preparation Subject Matter Knowledge Attestation. The second is the Intel Flex. The Educator Preparation Subject Matter Knowledge Attestation is only available for a subset of tests at specific Educator Preparation programs. These assessments have specific eligibility requirements. At a minimum, candidates must be enrolled in one of the identified approved initial licensure programs and must be in good standing with the program. Candidates should work with their sponsoring organizations to determine if they are offering an alternative for their licensure area and associated MTELs, and the eligibility requirements for the alternative assessment. Current offerings are limited to the organizations and programs listed on our website. MTEL Flex provides an assessment option for MTEL candidates whose score on select MTEL test fields is very close to the passing score within one standard error of measurement of passing on the most recently operating version of the MTEL since October 20, 2020. Candidates who meet the eligibility requirements can submit an MTEL Flex assessment rather than retaking the MTEL test. For MTEL Flex, candidates provide an analysis of an MTEL test objective to demonstrate the depth of their subject matter knowledge. Candidates who pass MTEL Flex will meet the subject matter test requirements for their license. For more details about the structure of the MTEL Flex and eligibility, please see H T 
https colon forward slash forward slash www.doe.mass.edu forward slash mtel forward slash alt hyphen a s s e s s forward slash m t e l hyphen f l e x dot h t m l now let us discuss steps to obtain the special education emergency license extension as referenced earlier the special education licenses were not automatically extended Therefore, to qualify for the extension, applicants must be able to demonstrate appropriate subject matter knowledge in the field. There are two ways to demonstrate subject matter knowledge for the special education licenses. Applicants can either satisfy a competency review or complete a performance-based assessment through Structured Guidance and Support, or SGNS. A competency review is the process for determining whether the subject matter knowledge requirements for a license have been met in a field for which there is no MTEL subject test. Competencies are also known as the coverage of requirements and can be satisfied through the completion of a professional learning experience that provided at least 10 hours of instruction specific to and completely covering a subject matter knowledge requirement. Competencies can be satisfied through completion of any one or combination of coursework, seminars, workshops, mentored employment, or peer coaching, or structured guidance and support, which we will discuss further. The Structured Guidance and Supports path is one path for completing the competency review. The SGNS process is a performance based assessment for a teacher licensure candidate. It focuses on three key components, classroom-focused professional support, supervision, which includes intensive supervision and regular ongoing support, and assessment of the candidate's knowledge and skills against a performance rubric aligned to the subject matter knowledge of the license. The SGNS process and assessment takes place over a supervised 150-hour field-based experience which offers classroom-focused professional support to licensed candidates. For those employed in special education with an emergency license, working with your district to complete SGNS might be your most expeditious path to satisfying the competency review and extending your emergency license to June 30th, 2023. Now let us discuss waivers. If an educator with an ESL or special education emergency license is unable to obtain an emergency extension, employers may pursue a hardship waiver in order to employ them without a license in the 2022-23 school year. It is the district's responsibility to follow the instructions for applying for the waiver in ELAR and submitting the requested evidence that a good faith effort has been made to hire licensed personnel. It is at the district's discretion to submit a waiver request on the educator's behalf. School districts can begin applying for a hardship waiver for the 2022-23 school year in ELAR as soon as April 1, 2022. Please note that in order for a school district to request a waiver, the educator must have an application on file for a provisional, initial, or professional license. Licensure Office Applicant Support the licensure office is committed to providing optimum support and guidance to all applicants for licensure in the state of Massachusetts. Here are some ways we can help you. If you would like to talk with us by phone about the communication you're receiving in ELAR, our customer service specialists are available Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. and from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. To reach the first available specialist, call 781-338 six six zero zero you may also visit us in person at our welcome center at 75 pleasant street in malden our hours of operation are 8 45 a.m to 4 45 p.m each business day visit the licensure webpage www.doe.mass.edu forward slash licensure 
for the most updated information and news pertaining to licensure. Once you have submitted an application, the licensure office utilizes the online ELAR system to communicate directly with you in writing about the outcome of your application. In addition, you can upload documentation for review and test scores are posted directly to your account.